this is not a 3D printer unboxing video, but an accessory unboxing video, which will help us to dry our filaments. And this thing is modular, so you can do four spools and uh, attach and detach, assemble, disassemble. And this thing is from Cheeto Systems, Filo Partner E1. Let's take it off. So this is the module one. This is the module two. And this is the base. And there's nothing else in the box. This is very simple. So, done, done. But there's some other things we need to do. This is how modular it is. So you can just like, boop, boop. So let's look at a couple things inside. These are the other parts that we will need. Some PTFE tubings and the power cord. That's it. Oh, we are gonna talk about these too. Because if you wanna seal it, you're gonna do this. If not, here. Which I like the storage style here. Again. And the screen moves up and down, which is good. And, you, and over here, when you look at this machine, they're like air flows, right? This is the hot air where it comes in, and this is the air ventilation where you get it out. So let's look at this device a little bit closer. So over here, we have the hinges. It's gonna open up like that. And these are the silicone sealant areas where you might wanna extract the filament connectors, right? The PTFE tubes. And then we are gonna turn this like that. And here are the other um, sealant areas. And we can put the PTFE tubes here to create an operation while we are printing. So the filament can come out from here while we are printing. Filaments can dry and roll at the same time. Of course, it's not motorized, but the machine will pull, the printer will pull. And these are the lock sections where we can lock it, so they're not gonna open. But you can move this box as a storage of your filament as well. So I'm gonna open these up right now and look inside. So inside of this, um, we need to remove these uh, tapes, obviously. Remove the tapes. There's other tape in here. Let's be removed. Yeah, that's where we put these uh, silica gels to reduce the humidity for the storage purposes, not for the drying purposes. And um, let's put our roller back in. It snaps in, that's where the roller is, and you can plug in this thing. Sorry, I think you plug in it first, and then you do the yeah, and then you do the attachment of these rollers. Yes, now it clicked. So this is how it is. Yep, this is how it is. These are the rollers per filament roll you have. And this is the area where you can put the silica gels to facilitate the, facilitate the storage while um, filament is keeping itself dry. And here is the indicator, reusable indicator, to understand what's the moisture level inside this box. I wish it was a um, battery powered um, screen, but it's okay, I guess. I don't know how to read this, which one is which, I don't know, technically. Um, but we can learn about it later on. So this is box one. This is the same, same box in here too. I'm gonna remove the things. So this is for drying purposes, right? If you wanna uh, do storage, if you wanna store this thing, uh, let's zoom out a little bit. So let's say you are using this, you dried it, you good, you wanna keep your filament like this. So what you're going to do when you take it off, make sure that you put the seals on, unplug these, <coughs> seal these too, and uh, make sure that you seal that part too. I don't know why there's an opening in here. But this should be also uh, plugged in. Let's plug this. Okay, maybe like that. 
Okay, make sure those are sealed in. And then under it, there are two openings where the heat, where the heated air gets in. Let's lock this before I break it. So where the heated air gets in, moist air comes out. So these panels, the magnetic panels, seals the bottom of it. So when you do that, you're good. This is your storage box. You can store your filament with it. Yeah, but if you put it like that, it's not going to dry. So what you need to do, make sure that you look at under, relocate your magnets plates in here, and then put it on, and then you're good. Same goes for this box too, it's the same thing. And of course, yeah, make sure that these are out of the way. These sealants, uh, silica gels are out of the way. Here, we can update the firmware by using USB-C and this is the back, that's the front. This, this is the rear of it, so on-off button. And yeah, all right, let's look at the machine um, settings in here. When you first have one, this language might be Chinese. So you click this part over here, you go to the second page, and in here, you're going to change it from Chinese to English. If it were the Chinese, that's how you change it to English, right? That's what, I, what happened to me actually. But let's go back to the normal operation. So right here, you can select module one and module two, which are like two different boxes, and you can um, dry them at different settings. So right now, for example, if this is like 33 Celsius, target temperature is like 50, and it's going to do it for eight hours, you can, let's say it's going, we, we want it, um, let's say we want it like six hours, at 50 Celsius, that's where I set this. When I click this play button, it's going to play. And right now the current humidity is 48%. And I click the second box, which is 60, 50 Celsius, eight hours. And I can literally, let's say seven hours, keep it 50, and I can independently run these. Whenever, and, and the second box has the humidity level of 53, 52%, because I run it a little bit. So from here, Whenever I click this, I start the first one. Whenever I click the second one, it's not started yet. I click this, now it starts. Whenever it starts, you can see the pause button and the stop button activated. And now two of the boxes independently working from each other and drying the need of different material filaments, which is good. I like it. And also in here, you can see the recommendations and select these and click apply, but you need to stop the machine first. So right now, I'm going to stop the module one. I'm going to stop the module two as well. So once it's stopped, you can see the clocks are set back for each of them. So right now I can go here and click this one, for example, and apply it to both of the modules as the recommended setting or click 60, apply it. See, it's already loaded up in there and I can do that uh, by just doing that, by just uh, selecting this pre-recommendation settings, which is good, but you need to be not running the machine. Once you stop the machine, you will continue hearing the fans. It is going to continue running for a minute or 30 seconds to cool down everything. So don't worry about it. As long as your timer is done, you stop the machine. Here is also cool. This is the batch setting. So you will select two of your devices and let's say setting one, setting two, setting three, and setting four, you can just like, Day, I want it in 60 Celsius and 12 hours. Both of them work at the same time. You just like select which ones at the same time and you click this and it runs both of the modules for 60 Celsius, 12 hours. Or if you, you're gonna do that set too, you need to do that, but you also need to come back and stop both of the modules. Maybe batch stopping should be an option to here, which I don't see. Um, once both of them have stopped, you can again batch select those two and then let's say I'm going to use settings 3, 45 Celsius, 6 hours, click that, boom, both of them starts working immediately like that. And that's the batch option which is really great. And when you come to the settings, you can change it to Fahrenheit or Celsius, for my American friends it's Fahrenheit, for my European friends it's Celsius. Screen timer off, you can update the firmware by using the USB-C plug on the side over here. And uh, when we go to the page two, again, language change, reset the default and manufacturer information. 
Intelligent control is also an option. You can click the automatic drying. So whenever the humidity goes above some level, it will start the automatic drying and it explains in here how it works. And close this silent mode. Right now you can hear fan probably. Silent mode just like drops the fan speed and a little bit silent. And that again explains the de definition in here. I don't think I need the silent mode. And the other one is filament box identification, which is basically you can keep it on. Uh, when you remove the box, it will stop the operation as per Zanus. So let's say it's on right now, right? And both of my systems are working, one and two. And now I'm going to remove one of the boxes. It should stop automatically. Aha, this is the filament detection, uh, automatic detection system. Drying has been terminated, automatically terminates it, which was the first one I removed. And if I were to not have this intelligent control here, it wouldn't stop. That's why I'm going to keep it. And in, in here, literally I can he feel the, in here, I can feel the hot water. This is very sucking the air in. Let's put this one back on. It's not going to tell anything, I guess. Yep. The first one is still stopped and I can run this back on. All right, up until this moment, I show you guys how this filament box uh, is assembled, what are the features, the mechanical integration and everything, and the flow of the air and everything. So you can literally feel that hot air is getting in like a hair dryer, which is really nice. And once you stop everything, within a minute, it stops down. So now I'm going to put some filament rolls in here and dry them. All right, this is a moist filament that I printed a banshee with. Um, look at this one. It's pretty much brittle and didn't do well, okay? Now we are going to dry this filament with our machine. It's this filament over here it's this filament over here it's a wood pla as well and we're going to dry that and then print this again now let's get this thing in action we're gonna open this one up open this one up just make sure this doesn't fall it's kind of unbalanced i'm gonna put my wood filament here another filament here another filament these are like silk filaments <clears throat> and these are all like have some uh, humidifying issues, but we are gonna focus on this filament which we just printed the bench with that was ugly. Now we are going to do that again. Let's close this, let's close that, lock them. And since I'm not going to use printing function, let's remove these PTFEs and seal the silicone then. Click here, uh, PLA Pitchy Apply. Click here, oh, we're already in here. Let's go to the second one too. Where PLA Pitchy Apply. They're all applied at the same time. And I click Run, that's it, very fast running. Now it is uh, running for four next four hours to change the humidity in there. So the current uh, box humidity is 50% for almost two of them. And we are going to see how the filament is going to react once it is dried and we are going to try that print again now i will now i will just wait four hours maybe eight i might increase it but we're gonna find out let's talk about some test results i used a wood filament that was like six years old i'm not joking it's a very very old one and very very moist one so this is the very first print uh no drying right look at it it is very bad, it just like cracks, no drying at all, it, it, it's awful. Then I did this, so I dried it 7 hours, this is like 8 minute bunker benchy, dried it for 7 hours, after 7 hours this is what we get, it's a step forward, it's still, you know, it's still not that good, and this is 14 hour dried benchy. Getting better, more structural integrity, and it's drying, obviously. There's a less oozing and everything. And I put 24 more hours on it. And then I print it while I'm drying it. 
look at this one. This is the solution. I believe this is the pushing the limit on this dryer. Look, it doesn't budge. It's it's fixed. My filament that was like six years old-ish come back to life. And it works really good too. Literally, it is not budging. Yeah, so basically, I came from this to this by drying this filament over uh, 30 hours, I guess, at this point. Uh, this was a 14 hour drying, over 30 hours drying. I got it done from this to this by using our modular Cheeto Systems filament dryer. And this is the wood filament that's like six years old or something like that. So did I dry only wood filament? No, I dry silk filaments and normal PLA too. Results are mostly good. I didn't have any failures yet with my results and wood filament was the challenge and this thing surpassed it. So that is great. This is end of our video. I went through this Cheeto Systems Filo Partner Filament Dryer machine. This is pretty modular as you guys can see throughout the video and I was a little bit maybe harsh with it in terms of the uh, structure and like putting it from uh, one place to another. It's pretty decent, it's pretty robust uh, and it is very modular too. That's what I really like about this and you can add up more storage systems that are sold separately to this system and as you guys can see there are like two systems here and it can be independently run so it's simply this is like this independent chamber one independent chamber two you can set different temperatures you can run them separately and you can uh, satisfy the needs of different materials and you can increase number of these so you can store them there's a um, sealing box sealing system under them too so you can seal them right we went through all this it's easy to update the firmware and these chamber systems are really good so overall I like this I tested it you guys see the results especially for my wood filament after six years long not using that filament and drying it uh, that was pretty impressive. I wasn't sure if it's going to work or not, but it worked to be honest with you. That's why I showed it in here. So that is a win for me so I can make use of the wood PLA. I guess this is a pretty straightforward product and it works really nice. So it is for sale in Amazon and in their website to around $139. It's not cheap, but it's not too expensive, crazy expensive either. Uh, that's why it's a great balance, I guess, in terms of the product. I have been harsh with it, as you guys see in the video. So far, so good. It works. Uh, it's a pretty decent storage system and robust. Would I buy this filament drying system? Yes. It is a very useful accessory. And I think it's going to be really nice to uh, dry carbon fiber filaments, carbon fiber reinforced filaments too. So we are going to test those too in the short form videos probably. So stay tuned. I'm putting the links down below if you guys would like to purchase. They are going to be from Amazon and Cheeto Systems website. Those are both affiliate links. So if you click, I will get some uh, percentages out of that. If you like this video, why not? And how uh, one thing that I forgot to mention, I guess, is when it's pulling the filament from here, you want to make sure that the rotation is in the correct direction. So it pulls out properly. Otherwise, there's a little bit of friction might happen but uh, Prusa MK4S did it really nicely and yeah that's the last thing and as always happy 3D printing and don't forget to subscribe to 3D Printing Doctor's YouTube channel see you guys in the next video